G'day you absolute legend, Stu from UAV Futures here and boy oh boy am I excited. We are back with our first video of review season at the UAV Futures FPV headquarters and here we are, we're going to be talking about the new kid on the block or I guess new to me, thanks very much uh, Depression for keeping me under a rock for the last six months or so, but we're talking about Express LRS. It's a new radio link that a lot of people are switching to. I did a little poll recently that should pop up here, and there seems to be a lot of interest in it. We're gonna be going through who should get it, the pros, the cons, the setup, and uh, specifically talking about this mouthful, the ES24TX Pro Micro TX. Uh, I've got it in the back of my radio right here. Hopefully I can get that in a roof cam as well. And who should get that? And I think it's about $70. So is it worth upgrading? If you're a newcomer, how easy is it to set up? All that sort of stuff. So first things first, what is Express LRS? So uh, that is the radio link that you use to control your drone. So typically when we're flying around at FPV drones, we've got a video link and we've also got a control link. So the control link that we're talking about is Express LRS. Some of the advantages is it's got extreme low latency. So from stick end to drone response, it feels very, very snappy on the sticks. You can read more in the link that I'll put in the description as well. Um, it is open source, which means there is a ton of potential and seems to be moving forward very, very rapidly at the, uh, the progression rate. So that's fantastic to see. Uh, and the big one for me, there's two things. The antennas on these little boards and on the receivers are absolutely minuscule. So uh, flying around, you don't need to worry about having a huge antenna hanging off the back of your drone. If you're into something like whoop flying or tiny little crafts, you're worried about weight limits. Well, you never have to have a big daggy dorky antenna hanging off the back ever again. You're gonna get longer flight times, all that sort of stuff. And the number one thing for me is the range and the reception. So the fail safe rate on the Express LRS, as far as I've been using it and experiencing it, has been very, very positive. And I've, heard, I've had a single fail safe yet, I must say, where if I was flying around on something like Free Sky or uh, you know one of those other, I guess, what's another one, Spectrum or something like that, I'd be a little bit more concerned. Uh, it's sort of feeling like crossfire to me in terms of fail safe. So feeling very, very good. Uh, if you're worried about losing your model, flying in some sketchy areas, you really need that reception. Uh, that control link there, Express LRS. I'm gonna get sick of saying that, ELRS. Uh, is definitely a very, very, that's probably the number one pro for me, something that I like about it. Now, that brings us on uh, some of the things I dislike about Express LRS, and that's gonna be talking about the setup as well. Because it's open source, you're gonna encounter a few bugs. You're gonna be encountering things that don't work. Uh, you've always gotta be, you've gotta pretty much have a computer set up. You've gotta use like a configurator. It, I found it more difficult than using Betaflight um, to get mine set up and working and you're not sure what is gonna work. I had to flash these drones specifically with a different hex file, all that sort of stuff. I had to downgrade my module. Um, it just, it wasn't the most intuitive thing. So if you're one of those people out there and you are already struggling with just running Betaflight or just setting up your basic drone or you think Crossfire is complex, you need to stay away from Express LRS at its current state. That doesn't mean that it's not rewarding and uh, you shouldn't maybe think about it in the future, but it's current state. Even I took, uh, it took me about a day of mucking around, doing lots of flashing, using different computers, drivers, a whole bunch of different things, searching for hex files, all that sort of stuff. Um, it took me about a day and I feel like this is my full-time job to get it set up and working correctly. And I wanna give a huge shout out to the boys over at Express LRS on their Discord. I'm gonna link that down below as well. They gave me nothing but like support. Every single question that I saw people in there, I think it was Dreadfire or something like that. I'm gonna have to put a little, uh, little link somewhere or a picture. He was an absolute legend at giving you some help. So if you wanna jump in and give yourself a bit of a challenge, you'd like all the pros that Express LRS offers, well, uh, definitely go and join that Discord because they're extremely helpful. Now, I should show you some flight footage in the background of this little thing cruising around, and spoiler alert, uh, it's been pouring rain a little bit and I actually do have some gates set up, but it seems like as soon as I set some gates up the other day, it has been raining for the last three days. We've got some earlier footage here and I feel extremely confident flying this thing around, so much so that there is a huge body of water basically at the end of the property right here. And uh, I thought, you know what? I normally wouldn't do this and I know they say not to fly over water. That bird's very noisy. Um, but I was like, yeah, let's do it. I felt very, very confident in flying Express LRS around. Now, uh, while we're watching a bit of that flight footage in the background some, as it's cruising around the property, something I wanna mention as well, with this little model from module from Happy Model, I had to flash this and it was kind of annoying because the SPI currently 
doesn't work. So this has got an SPI receiver in my little board here, and I think I was flying it on a Mobula or a 6 as well. The SPI receiver doesn't currently work when you're trying to bind it on version 2.0, which is what needs to, this needs to be on 2.0. This doesn't work on 2.0. So that was very, very frustrating. I had to downgrade this and flash it with a different target, uh, which I believe was 1.2. Then I had to get a different hex file and flash the board on here uh, with a manual flash as well. I can link those down below. And thank you very much to the Discord for your help as well. Uh, then finally, they were able to work together. So if you do have this module, um, and you want to give it a go, be prepared. It might be fixed by the time this video up uploads because I know the open source project on Express LRS is moving very, very quickly. But for me, um, it, it took a bit of time. It took a bit of learning and all that sort of stuff, but uh, we're finally there. And there might even be some more features that can offer once this thing is updated a little bit more or once a beta flight and this board are updated a little bit more to talk better together. So at the moment, I've got mine on 1.2 and a different hex file and then I needed beta flight. I think it was 10.8 was recommended to use the experimental branch. And then uh, I ended up working on 10.7 because I couldn't get the 10.8 to flash it. Anyway. It seemed to be a bit of a nightmare. And then uh, finally, let's wrap this up with who should get this? Is it gonna be a right for you? And a big one that I haven't really spoken about yet because it's not about this module so much, it is the price of the receivers. They are dirt cheap. I think they're like $15 or something like that for a receiver, which is gonna go multiple kilometers if you wanna do long range. It's got rock solid uh, reception. So I think that's gonna be something for the budget conscious people as well. You're gonna save a lot of money if you're just jumping into an ecosystem. If you're just jumping into drones, you're gonna save some money going Express LRS and it has a very, very bright future ahead of you. Now, who is this not for? And I'm sure Happy Model won't like me saying this, um, the people who already have a bunch of receivers, you might already have a whole fleet of 10 quads sitting on your wall, in your drawer, wherever you keep them, under your bed. I don't know what you do with your drones, but I digress. Uh, you probably don't want to waste all those things. Crossfire is still an absolutely fantastic radio protocol. If you're on Crossfire, I don't know if I'd be switching over. Those people though who are on FreeSky on your standard like XM Pluses and some things from a few years ago, I think that, yeah, that makes a really compelling case to change because I would trust, trust this far more than I would some of my XM Pluses. Plus you don't have those dorky antennas as well. The little antennas that you see on here are absolutely microscopic. It's like this tiny little, uh, ceramic little piece right here, like a printed board antenna. So all in all, I'm gonna give this thing a thumbs up. The unit itself, it was very easy to flash. I'm gonna have some more videos coming out on it. I really like the big heat sink it's got in here. It has a dedicated fan. It's got some LEDs, which mine aren't configured at the moment because I had to downgrade mine and on 1.2, but hopefully in the future, that's gonna give some better options as well. Um, and I should say, this is how easy it was to bind once uh, you put it in and... We went down here, let's flick all these switches. Should have done this bit in the middle of the video, but anyway, uh, we simply went to system. I had my Lua script installed. Does this thing shot in the roof? Who knows if it is or isn't. Anyway, then once that was in there, just went down to bind and uh, Bob's your uncle, you're away, you were bound up and it wasn't too bad at once I'd flashed the correct hex and had the right beta flight and flashed the module. You know, once it was all set up, <laughs> It kind of did work like it was supposed to. Anyway, look, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Definitely subscribe for more FPV related content because we're gonna be having so much stuff coming. I've got a heap of products here. There is some new things that people haven't seen yet. I'm very, very excited. I'm gonna be also showing some guides, things like how to set up Express LRS, how to put the Lua script on, how to flash a module, how to flash the hex file for this thing. So if those are the sort of videos that you were interested in, and they're the videos that I believe help people get flying, please share some love. Think about subscribing or dropping down to those Patreon subscribers down below as well. Thank you so much to those people because without you, I wouldn't be able to be here truly uh, and still make these videos and help people get flying. We're back, I've never felt better. Thank you so much for everybody's support. A big shout out to Happy Model, or uh, I think this one might've come from Bangers or something. Check the link out down below, or I just have a bit of a Google, see one around you. And as always, happy flying.